Hello and welcome back to the channel. Yes, it's been a while. I've been having a little hiatus, a little break, a little rest, and I'm back. Um, I think it's been a, at least it's been more than two months since I've done any sort of movie reviews. I done one little video about social anxiety because it resonated with me at the time. Um, and I'm basically not going to go through with you everything I've watched in the last eight weeks, however long. 73. I've watched 73 movies in the last eight weeks. Um, I have no life very clearly. So what I decided to do instead of telling you everything I've watched is I've broken down 10 movies that I would advise you to avoid and 10 that I would recommend that I've watched in the last eight weeks or so. So I'm going to get these out of the way first. There's a few very popular movies that I've watched that I loved that I'm not even going to put on the list because everyone's reviewed them, everyone's spoken about them. I just wanted to tell you that I enjoyed them too. So everything, everywhere, all at once um, is getting a lot of um, buzz at the moment. It is very different. Um, if you haven't seen it, I would recommend that you check it out. It is a foreign language film. Um, I don't want to tell you anything about the story because it is a different one. It's very strange in places, but it's very innovative. It's very interesting. Put it on the list if you haven't seen it as yet. Top Gun Maverick, absolutely adored it. Thought it was fantastic. Um, didn't think I would like it anywhere near as much as the original, but I did. And Tom Cruise does not age, he's a vampire. The Black Phone. This was my most anticipated movie of this year so far. Um, I did enjoy it, I did think it was very good, but I didn't love it as much as I thought I would. I wanted at least another half hour. I wanted some background on the grabber. I wanted some explanation as to the supernatural elements of the movie and where that all came from and how it was connected to the phone. But I did enjoy it, it was a good movie. I think maybe it's a case of me hyping up a little too much. The Sadness. Now, this is a divisive one. Maybe I shouldn't have put this in a list of very well-known ones, but I think amongst the horror community, everyone will be aware of the sadness. So this is a very gory new um, zombie movie. It, I loved it. For a lot of people, they thought it took it a bit too far. It was a bit too grotesque. It was a bit too much in your face. Um, some of it was really shocking and really gross and quite vulgar. I enjoyed it, I have to admit, I did really like it. Um, so yeah, those four movies um, I haven't put in my list of 10 that I would recommend because I feel most people have seen them or are aware of them. So 10 movies, let's work from number 10 up to number one. I'm now figuring this is gonna be longer than I wanted it to be and I apologize. I didn't want my first video back to be really long, but it's really hard not to go into what I've watched um, and what I liked and what I didn't. So. Let's go down these 10 movies that I would recommend for you to check out. Okay, so first up at number 10 is a little animation called Apollo 10 and a Half Space Age Childhood. This is one I had no knowledge of. Um, I watched um, Lost in the Reels channel, Sean was talking about this very glowingly. Um, so I added it to my list. I wasn't aware previously. It is a animation and it's about a boy, a boy um, and his family around the time of the moon landings. It is an adorable movie. It's like a real slice of life, like a real insight into that time and how people and kids would have been feeling, the family dynamic. Um, I would really recommend it. As Sean said, uh, it is excellent. It's a wonderful little movie. So that's Apollo 10 and a half, A Space Age Childhood. Um, number nine um, is another animation, weirdly, and it's a very lighthearted one. It's Bob's Burgers. Now, I've never seen the cartoon. I took my son to see this at the cinema and it was just so much fun, such a light-hearted story. I was really invested in the characters, I really cared about what happened to them. It was just a lot of fun, I, I had a lot of fun with it. Um, so that's Bob's Burgers at number nine. Number eight is Emergency. Now, this is a movie that's on Amazon Prime at the moment, I believe. And this follows um, a couple of young lads who find a girl in their apartment, I believe it's their apartment, a, a long time ago I've seen this now. Um, they are black, this young girl is white, they feel they have a dead body, they don't know what to do with it, they feel that the colour of their skin is going to influence what happens, they think they're going to be blamed on this, um, there's major panic, there's a lot of other things going on around it, there's a, quite a bit of social commentary in this but I don't feel it's shoved down your throat, I don't feel it's heavy handed, I feel it is something that we as privileged white people need to be aware of, need to, things we would never worry about or think about, things that wouldn't even remotely cross my mind or wouldn't be on my radar, these young men 
The first instinct is not to pick up the phone and call the police. Their first instinct is, I'm going to be blamed on that. And I think as a society, we need to look at that. We need to, you know, it's something... Weirdly, this is a comedy, guys, and they do put amongst that serious elements, which I feel really work. Um, there was a live stream of Chitting the Shit stream from the Cinema Squad I watched last night. Um, and a really interesting thing came out of it that we sort of were discussing the fact that um, comedy sometimes when they put a serious element, an emotional message, anything in there, it seems to hit so much, so much more clout because we're, we're on that high, we're on that laugh, we're unaware, we're not prepared and then all of a sudden boom. I mean I think this does that quite well. Number seven, The Body, El Cuerpo. Now this is Spanish, um, this is like a murder mystery, this is trying to work out what's happened to this woman who's died, who's to blame. Really interesting, really old fashioned style um, detective story which really twisted and turned and kept me interested from start to finish. So that's The Body, El Cuerpo, it's from 2012. Um, on number six, now, When the Wind Blows. This was released in 1986 and it's an animation. I love this. Now, I was not aware of this. I was made aware of this on Three From The Graves channel. Three From The Grave I used to be part of when it first started. And there's been a couple of lineup changes and, and Random Ross, who um, is part of the threesome at the moment. That sounded all wrong. Um, he did a video about this, a talk about this, and this is set during a nuclear attack um, that hits Britain, I think, is it the 50s or the 60s? I can't remember what era it's set in, and it follows just this old couple and their life, what happens, this assault hits Earth, and it's, it's horrendous, it's such a good movie. Now, I believe there is a like uncut version of this that is quite upsetting, quite really gory stuff in there for a cartoon. Um, Ross does, I actually will link below or I'll link at the end. Ross does um, actually describe and go into the full story. Now, the version that I saw isn't the version he described. It was very edited, but it was for someone from the UK. It was very British. It was very very endearing, um, like programs like Last of the Summer Wine that have a real place in the hearts of, or like Open All Hours, you know the, the type of quintessential British show that has a real place in the hearts of UK people. Um, this is beautifully done and it's a really horrendous subject matter um, and I just, I really would recommend it. As I say, it's from 1986 and it's called When the Wind Blows. Okay. Number five, this is another Spanish one called The Hidden Face, La Cara Oculta from 2011. Again, amazing. Um, this is one I don't want to tell you too much about. It follows a couple. Um, the woman discovers something about a new house that they move into. Um, I cannot go into detail without spoiling this, but this is a mixture of a mystery, a thriller, a drama, um, a love story. There's a lot going on here. It is fantastic. Go into it completely blind if you're interested in seeing it. Um, I love the story. I would love to see them remake this for more people to actually watch it. As I say, it's Spanish. It's from 2011, The Hidden Face. You know what? I think I'm going to have to do two separate videos because this is going to be too long otherwise. So I'll do this video for um, films I recommend. I'll do another one for ones I would say avoid. So number five, Hippopotamus. Now, I had seen this before, but I think I was half asleep when I tried to watch it and it didn't all go in. So I rewatched it. It's from 2017. I believe it's on Prime. Um, this is a movie about a guy that kidnaps a girl and he puts her in this like cell um, this room which she can't move um, and he basically the idea is he's going to keep her there until she falls in love with him. There's a lot more going on behind the scenes, there's a lot more to the story than we're aware of at the start. It's really well acted, it's really interesting, it's really claustrophobic, um, you have a real intense hatred for this guy that has kidnapped this girl. Um, we follow her attempts at maybe thinking about trying to get out. Um, it was really engaging. It took me places I wasn't expecting. Um, I wasn't expecting sort of a bit of a twist in the middle and I love it when a movie surprises me. So Hippopotamus 2017, um, check it out guys. It is really, really good. I'm not going into detail about actors and actresses and all this stuff. Um, I'm just telling you what I've watched. I'm trying to like 
not be talking all day. Um, if I was doing a single review, I would give you more detail, but for some of these, I feel that you want to go in knowing as little as possible. Um, obviously, have a look on the synopsis on IMDb, see if it tickles your fancy, and if it does, check it out. So, number three, The Man Who Saved the World. Now, this is a video, or this is a movie that I actually want to do a true crime. It's not true crime, a true life video on. I have a series where I talk about movies that are inspired by real life events and this one isn't just inspired by a real life event, this is a documentary. You probably will know the story. This is about a Russian who basically prevented World War III. The Russian satellite systems picked up um, an impending attack from the US and something basically had malfunctioned. This isn't a spoiler, this is a very famous story. Something had malfunctioned in the Russian systems and this one guy had to make the decision whether to press the button or order the pressing of the button that would fire nuclear weapons from Russia to the US, which the, the overall impact would have been a lot of death and destruction in a lot of countries leading to world war. Um, he made the call not to press the button because he used sort of common sense why would this be happening but at the same time russia was actually expecting an attack from the us at that particular time due to political situations um, a plane had been shot down accidentally quite close to this time um, but this man basically single-handedly made a decision that basically saved the world so it's called the man who saved the world we interview the guy in it we follow him we talk to him um, we have a younger, obviously, actor playing him at that time when he was young, interspersed through. Really interesting story, really interesting man. Um, he ended up actually being reprimanded for his decision, been moved to a lower category position, never really had the support from uh, the Russian government or the military for his decision, which a lot of people didn't support, even though he made the right call. There was a issue with the satellite equipment um, and there wasn't an attack, so if he had have fired the weapons, God knows what would have happened. So yeah, that is The Man Who Saved the World, and um, that's a documentary, I believe that is, I see they're on Prime or Netflix, I can't remember at the moment, but it's really worth a watch. Number two, Extremely Loud and Incredibly Close, which is from 2011. So this is a bit of a different one, and the reason I watched this is because Tom Hanks and Sandra Bullock are in it. I'd never heard of it, I do really enjoy both actors. So this is a story centred around the day of 9-11. It, only a little bit of it is around that. I'm going to give a, it's not really a spoiler because this is not what the movie's about. Tom Hanks is not in this movie for very long. He is actually unfortunately in one of the buildings during 9-11. That happens right at the start of this movie. The movie is about his son who um, is trying to follow clues that he believed his father gave him um as a way to stay close to his dad they used to do like scavenger hunts his dad used to write him clues places to go things to find and they would do them together and he believes he has found in the home um a final clue that his father has left him and with this is a key and he is determined that he is going to find what this key opens and this movie follows this little boy he's probably around about i would say maybe 11 12 and he wants to try and find this final thing, like as a final thing to do with his dad, even though his dad's gone. Um, really heartfelt, lovely movie. Um, shows the wider implications to the families that lost people in 9-11. Um, obviously, we're, we are all aware of that and how horrible it is. But this is a proper little window into one family. Um, and it's, it's really heartfelt. I would recommend it. That, I believe, is on Prime. Number one is You Won't Be Alone. Now, this one has been on my radar for a long time. This is like a folk horror story. Really, really interesting. This is about um, like a curse and a witch and a curse being passed down. And I can't tell you any more than that without spoiling the story. It's really um, interesting. The cinematography is beautiful. The sound design, everything in this movie is so well thought out and so well put together. Um, it is a subtitled movie. It won't be everyone's cup of tea. Not everyone's going to enjoy this. I, I just thought it's going to be one of those films that some people don't have the patience for, but the people that do are really going to appreciate it. Um, I loved it. I felt it was really different to a lot of things we've seen recently. I haven't seen anything like this in quite some time. Um, as I say, it's a folk story. It's about witchcraft. It's about a curse. 
um, it's about survival um, and I loved it so I would thoroughly recommend that guys so that is the top 10 movies that I would recommend from what I've watched over the last couple of months um, I hope there's something in there that you can maybe take away and check out um, and I will follow up with um, 10 movies that I think you can probably avoid that I've watched in the last couple of months if you follow me on Letterboxd all the movies I've watched all 73 of them well 73 up until last week um, are all on there with all my ratings. Um, I have got the link on the front of my profile if you want to check it out. Um, I will hopefully be back to normal next week so I can cover what I've watched this week and um, we're back on the horse guys. So thank you so much for watching and for all your support and during this time off I've actually went over 2,000 subscribers. I'm delighted. I'm getting more subscribers when I'm not doing videos. I don't know what that's telling me about myself. Maybe I shouldn't do videos. But I did ask a while back for questions for a 2K um, Q&A and I've still got all those questions. So if any of you have any questions you want to answer, please feel free. I'm trying to psych myself up to do a live to answer the questions, which is a bit scary, but I'm going to try it. I've never done it on my own before. I shall try and see what happens. I may chicken out and just do a video. We shall see. But um, thanks so much, guys, for all your support, for watching, for your patience with me over the last couple of months. I just needed a bit of a break. Loads going on at home. But um, I'm back on the horse and hopefully going to bring you my what I watch each week as well as concentrating more on the sort of creepy side of videos or true stories that inspired movies or TV shows. That's what I want to sort of go down the route of. But I will hopefully always have my weekly what I watched um, for my love of movies to be covered. So thanks guys. I shall see you in the next one. Overnight from Lisa Loves.